Hey, so this is going to be a quick video showing you how to calculate the von Bertalanffy growth function. This is the equation for the von Bertalanffy. Just to run through it real quick, we have LT, which is the length of a fish at time t. We have L infinity, which is the length of the fish at time infinity. So if we let the fish go forever, just keep growing, 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 what's sort of the maximum length that this fish will attain? This is the value 1. It could look like an L, but it's, it's the value 1. This is the E exponent function. K is a sort of growth function for this species, whatever species it is. And T sub 0, that's the um, essentially, it's what is the time when the fish is zero millimeters, okay? When the fish is just beginning to exist, right? This is a theoretical thing, but if what time is it when the fish is just beginning to exist? Okay, so, but let's, let's put this to use. So you're going to get a data set that looks something like this. These are different data than you will have generated in the lab. But you'll have a data set that looks something like this. You'll have fish number, the age of the fish, and in this case, the fork length of these fish in millimeters. So what are you going to do with this? There are a variety of ways you could calculate the von Bertalanffy growth function. But what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called the solver. The solver function in Excel. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate this equation. We want to calculate this equation for each of these individual fish. To calculate the equation, however, we're going to need these values. We need L infinity, we need K, we need T0, which we don't have. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put L infinity is equal to something here. And we also need K is equal to something. And T0 is equal to something. L infinity, what's the maximum size of these fish? Uh, 350. Looks about 350. 300. Let's make it 380. It doesn't have to be exact. But we want a, a reasonable number to start. What is, in fact, let's start with an unreasonable number. Let's make it 600. Okay, we'll come back to a more reasonable number. K, K should be um, generally less than 1. So let's make it 0.5. And T sub 0, make it 0.5. Okay, we'll come back to those. We just need some values to start. Now, we're going to have our von Bertalanffy growth function here. This is where we're going to enter this equation into these cells and calculate what the von Bertalanffy growth function predicts, right? So what these are, these are data, but then we're going to fit this model to those data. So how do we do this? Let's enter in, let me make, see if I can make this a little bigger, see if that helps on the screen. Let's enter in. What's our equation? The von Bertalanffy growth function says that the fish length is going to be equal to L infinity. Where is L infinity? It's over here. It's in I3. So we click on I3. Now the thing is we always want to use that particular cell. So we're going to copy this. We always want to use that particular cell. So I'm going to hit the F4 button and it puts dollar signs in there. And so that locks in that cell. If you don't when you use the F4 button, you can just type the dollar signs um, directly. And then we have we have to multiply it. So in Excel, we can't just put the parentheses. We have to put multiplies by 1 minus E in Excel is exponent, EXP. And that's a function. So we need parentheses again. And this number, what we see here in the exponent, is going to be what go in the parentheses. So it's going to be minus k minus k. There's our value for k. And we again, we don't want that to change, so we're going to hit dollar signs. 
times, again, multiply it by what's in these parentheses, times t. What's the t? t is the age. That one we're going to want to change. As we copy it down, it's going to be different for fish. We're just going to leave it like that. But then we're going to subtract from that t sub 0. And again, we want to not the cell not to change, so I'm going to hit F4 again. And let's close this up with parentheses. One parentheses, two parentheses, three parentheses. Okay, so that, given these numbers right here, that is what our current von Bertalanffy growth function says we expect for the length of the fish. And you look, it's not very close. That's quite off. But let's copy it. I'm going to hit Control C, copy. I'm going to jump all the way down here, and then we're going to paste it. So boom. So I've pasted this, and as I scroll down, you'll see the only thing that's changed is this number here, which refers to the cell over here. Everything, All the other cells are the same. Okay, cool. So let's see what this looks like. Let's select these three columns. We're going to insert... NXY scatter plot. And I'm gonna zoom out again so we can see things more easily. And so these blue circles are the data. The orange circles are what our von Berlanffy growth function is predicting. So that's not that great. Okay, you can see it's not very good. So let's just mess around just a little bit. What if we make this smaller like we did before 350 that's pretty good let's maybe change our k to 0 0.4 that looks a little better let's make that 0 0.3 that fits a little better let's mess with our 0 point or with our t0 actually i don't know if we should mess with that too much but let's just do it just for just for kicks so that looks like it fits pretty well not great right it's a little bit high here but not great not perfect but pretty well, much better than it did before. Okay, but what we're going to do is we are going to make it fit nicely. So first off, let's just change this. Let's get rid of these orange dots because this is supposed to be a line, right? The von Bertalanffy growth function is a line that's supposed to be going through our data. Just like you might have a straight line going through data that are straight, this is going to be a curved line going through data that are curved. Okay, so to do that, format, I've already selected the series v, VGF, so I want to format that selection. I want to come here and click on that. I want to click on marker. We don't want a marker. Marker options, none. But we do want a solid line. Boom. Solid line. And uh, Excel's a pain in the butt sometimes. Scientists often don't use Excel because it is a pain in the butt like this. All right, this, what, what is wrong? Let me click no line and then solid line. Oh, you dummy. Okay, that's my fault. That's not Excel's fault. That was my fault. I was clicking under marker options. Now I have to come here to line. Now I click solid line. And let's change the color. Let's make it orange so it'll be easier to see. Okay. So, that was partially my fault. Okay, so we look at this and like, what the hell is happening? Why is this doing this? Well, it's because this is an XY scatter plot, and what's happening is Excel is jumping from one to another. So, it's going from 1 to 3 to 10 to 14 to back to 10, 7 to 2. So, to deal with this, what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these values. This is something that you will definitely need to do at some point. You could even do it right at the beginning. And we're going to sort it so that the age in year is always, uh, it, it's stacked. It goes from smallest to largest. So we go to custom sort. Age in years. That's the one we want. Click age in years. Boom. Now we have, now we have a nice smooth line. Okay, so now what are we gonna do? How do we how do we solve this? So there are a number of ways to solve this. 
there are some ways, traditional ways people have used before computers were a really big deal. There are a lot of other software programs that you could use and in fact would be better than Excel. But because Excel is, is readily available, that's what we're going to use for this. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to use the solver function. But we're going to use the solver function to do something in particular. So if this is a data set, and we draw a line through this data set. What we can do is we can measure the distance between each point and the line. This distance is what we call a residual. What we are going to try to do is minimize the residuals. By minimizing the residuals we will get the best fit possible. So let me give you an example. Here's just a couple data points. Here is one curve we could draw through here and we have these residuals. Or here is another curve that we could draw through here and we have these residuals. So if we were to add up the purple residuals, right, the vertical lines that are purple, and add up the orange residuals, the orange lines that are vertical, the orange lines would be less. And that's because our data, that's because our curve, our model fits those data better. So that's what we're going to try to do. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the residuals. So the residual is a difference between what we observe and what we predict. So it's just going to be simple. Equals what we observe minus what we predict. Some of them are going to be negative, meaning that what we observe is below the curve, like down here. These are below the curve. Some of them will be positive, like these that are above the curve. Don't worry about that. Then the next thing we need to do is we want to square it. We're going to square for a variety of reasons. I'm not going to talk about why we would do it, but we're going to square that residual. So we're going to do equals, select that cell next to it. Then we have to have a little caret and a 2. So now we've squared that residual. And we're going to copy and paste that down here. Boom. So that's the residual squared almost done now what we do is we add up the sum of the squared residuals I spelled residuals wrong there we go okay and I'm gonna put that right here so it's equal to the sum of everything in this column I'm just gonna select this entire column that's the simplest that is our sum of the squared residuals so what we want to do is minimize that number, make that number as small as possible. Okay, and by making that number as small as possible, we get the best fit of this model to our data. How are we going to adjust the model? By messing with those values. So these are values that are related to the fish. They are biologically intrinsic mo values. And then we're going to see what are the values that we use to help get the fish fit this model the best. So how do we do this? Go to data. You should see something over here that says solver. I don't have it. I had it, but I took it away so I could demonstrate this. So you go over here to file, more, options. Now that we're in options, you want to go to add-ins. The way you get here might differ a little bit based on which Excel version you have, if you've got a Mac or PC or whatever. But you go to add-ins, right? Find add-in somehow. Then down here, manage Excel add-ins. You hit go. 
and it gives you these choices you want to click on the solver add-in and hit OK and then ta-da solver shows up alright so now I click on solver and there's a lot of stuff here but we don't need all of it what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this cell here this cell right here which is I8 so we click on I8 we're trying to make that cell the minimum the smallest possible value All right that's what we're interested in and how are we gonna do that we're gonna do it by changing these values here so we're telling Excel manipulate these values until you get the max the smallest value possible here that's it we don't have to worry about all this other stuff I mean sure we can that can be useful in some situations but not now we just hit solve boom and now it says do we want to keep the solver option or solver solution so we just look at this real quick and these this line fits the data very well I think that's excellent so we hit okay boom so what happened was Excel changed these values so now you can see now it's 369.2653 right K is point two zero eight T0 is 0 0.705 with rounding. Okay, so remember, you don't need to go more than three decimal places. And for length infinity, you don't need to go any decimal places. But here we go. These are the parameters, right? So these are the parameters of the von Bertalanffy growth function for this population of fish boom okay now here you have a figure now this figure is pretty good but it's far from finished right cause you gotta put in x and y axes you gotta get rid of this chart title this is the, the junk that excel gives you all the time that you don't need I'm gonna get rid of these dopey lines this should not be down here put this somewhere else boom 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 okay but you finish the figure, bring it up to scientific standards. We don't care about this number anymore, right? That was important to get these whoops, parameters, but we care about these numbers here, and we care about that figure, and that is the end. Okay, I hope that was clear. I know I went quickly, but it's a video. You can pause it and go back go forward. All right. Thank you very much. Enjoy your fit.